Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. New this new nearly four years after a pregnant woman and her boyfriend died in a botched drug deal. Police still looking for those killers. Now, Crime Stoppers is offering a cash reward in hopes of getting valuable information. 19-year-old Vianneth Ramos and 17-year-old Xavier Esquivel were killed just before 9.30 on August 30th back in 2020. Police say that Ramos, Esquivel, and two others were riding in a vehicle that was being chased by a gray SUV. The SUV caught up to the victims on the east side. Officers say that people in that SUV fired multiple times at these two in their vehicle. All four of the vehicle's occupants were kit, hit rather with by bullets. Ramos and Esquivel died from their injuries. Ramos was four months pregnant. Crime Stoppers willing to pay up to $5,000 for information leading to an arrest. The phone number to call 210-224-STOP. And happening today, our KZAC community partners are hosting a town hall to share information on organ donations. We'll also discuss the challenges and misconceptions of being a live organ donor. The town hall starts this afternoon at 2 o'clock. And a reminder, we're less than two weeks away from the solar eclipse. Our KSAT weather team wants to make sure you are ready. Later on today, meteorologist Sarah Spivey and Mia Montgomery are going to host an eclipse glasses giveaway at Yanaguana Garden at Hemisphere. You can start lining up at 4 o'clock and then those eclipse glasses, which you really do need, are going to be handed out at 630. You can find more information about this giveaway at ksat.com. Outside with Lafcam, some rain, so we need, we need lots of rain between now and let's say the weekend of the 6th and the 7th and you cleared all the dust out, clear all the pollen out, make it nice and beautiful for the air. Clear eight. it out, exactly. Hey, but did you see that in the distance, guys? I there, did. There the is sun's some clearing coming out. Yeah. So we're going to get some sun this afternoon, by the way. These are the eclipse glasses. Yes, you do need them. The only time you can lose these eclipse glasses is during the to uh, totality, which only lasts a few seconds to a few minutes here in San Antonio. So uh, come visit our giveaway uh, if you do need some glasses. Uh, here's a look at the authority radar. You see the showers that have been pushing through. It's been nice to see the rain. It's been a little cool this morning, too. These showers are pushing east now. We've got a few little leftover sprinkles here and there. Uh, just to the west of San Antonio. Those will push through and then we'll get some clearing this afternoon before a few more showers and storms may pop up during the afternoon hours. We'll have a chance for a few uh, isolated storms. Let's look at the cloud cover and you can see, yes, there is a clearing line there uh, where temperatures are a little bit warmer. That's where we've seen some more sun, 65 in Kerrville, 60 in Hondo. But I'll point out, you see right here, see these clouds popping up around Junction? These are the kind of clouds that could lead to a few pop up showers and storms a little bit later this afternoon. That's with the instability in the atmosphere. So that's what I want to watch. But in the meantime, expect to see the sun pop out here pretty soon in San Antonio. 56 at the airport, 58 Port SA. We'll carry some rain chances for about another hour or so and then drop them off a little bit before picking back up this afternoon. 72 at 4 o'clock and look for 70 at 6 p.m. and then down into the 60s tonight. Uh, the rain ends after 7 or 8 o'clock and we'll have another chilly morning tomorrow before some more rain chances early next week. We're going to talk all about it coming up here in just a few minutes. Look forward to that, Justin. Thank you. Police are hoping you can help them track down the murder suspect who killed a 24 year old woman back in February. We're told Miranda Gomez was in a car with several other people when she was shot and killed just after 5 a.m. on February 18th. It happened on Roland Road. That's near South W.W. White. People who were with Gomez believed they were followed by someone in a dark colored sedan after leaving a club called The Spot that's on Rigsby Avenue. Crime Stoppers wants you to call them if you have information. That number is 224-STOP. Now to a shooting that happened overnight. San Antonio police say a man shot another man in the face inside a home on the city's east side. It happened just after 2 this morning in the 2500 block of Indian Forest. Police say a man was able to get into the home via the front door with a key code. The man then went upstairs, and that's when police say the other man came out of a room with a gun and shot the man in the face. The shooting victim was taken to the hospital in critical condition. SAPD says the shooter was detained for questioning. Sheriff Stephanie's taking three men into custody after a carjacking at a 70-mile car chase all the way across two counties. The three men, Moses Osby, Isael Hernandez, and Adrian James Garcia, According to the sheriff, a woman was pumping gasoline at a convenience store on Tarpon Drive near Fair Oaks Ranch early yesterday morning when 
a vehicle with two men inside pulled up. The sheriff says that moments later, one of the men got out of the vehicle and pointed a gun at the woman's face and demanded that she turn over the Dodge Charger she was driving. Sheriff Salazar says that the two men then took off in the vehicle, which was a loaner car from a car dealership, and it had a GPS tracking device. Between the three of them, they were just out joyriding, driving around the city at, at well in excess of 100 miles an hour. At a certain point, they spotted the helicopter, and then they decided to make a break for it. Sheriff Salazar says that the chase ended when spike strips were deployed on Interstate 37 south of Pleasanton. The woman was not injured. The three were arrested, as you saw, and they're going to face several charges, including aggravated assault, evading arrest, as well as a gun charge. San Antonio police have arrested a third suspect in a deadly shooting that happened back in January. According to an arrest affidavit received overnight, 18-year-old Michael Jasso, who's you see right there, that's his picture, was one of three suspected involved in a murder back in January on the 26th. The deadly shooting happened in the 1000 block of San Luis on the city's west side. This is video we've got from the scene that happened that morning. SAPD says Yasso and two other men shot and killed 43-year-old Mondo Rodriguez during a drug deal. The other two suspects are already in custody. And more than three years after Jacob Dubois was murdered, a jury has found his killer guilty. On Monday, a Guadalupe County jury found 23-year-old Ethan Beckman guilty of murder and tampering with evidence. Prosecutors there say the victim, Jacob, disappeared in March of 2021. Church police say the discovery of Jacob's remain in September of 2022 led to Beckman's indictment in March of last year. Chief Jim Lowry says he hopes Beckman's conviction will give Jacob's family some peace. Sidewalks coming to a busy section of Culebra Road very soon. A committee meeting yesterday updating residents on the proposed design of the upgrades between Bandera and General McMullen. The Culebra Road changes should begin next year. They're going to include a narrowing of lanes to make room for pedestrian sidewalks. The hope is that this is going to slow down the speeders. Uh, there is a pedestrian crossing near the middle of the project that uh, we'll want to upgrade that to be what we call a hawk signal. It actually stops traffic for, for pedestrians to cross mid-block. There will also be updates to the drainage here. The $18 million project approved by voters as part of the 2022 bond package. Still coming up, the UTSA Roadrunners need to fill some big shoes before they kick off this fall. However, there are some shoes already filled with some solid veterans. We've got more on that coming up. Another San Antonio Easter tradition taking place this week. It's the Passion Play. However, you're going to notice there is a change this year. We have details on that after the break. Thousands of people set to gather in downtown San Antonio this Friday for the Passion Play. It's a Good Friday tradition here. It recreates the trial and the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Our world is struggling right now. And perhaps it's through the eyes of the Passion that we will encounter something new for us to, to take from. And hopefully it is through that reflection that we will then be able to change a little bit of our world, a little bit of our hearts, a little bit of our families perhaps, a little bit of our neighborhoods. So I too ask you to join us through the streets of San Antonio beginning at 9.30 this Good Friday, beginning at Travis Park. We'll make our way through the streets of San Antonio. We'll end up in front of the cathedral at 12 noon. And then we will continue with our moments of reflection. All are invited, all are welcome. It is a powerful event. Once again, the procession rather is going to start on Friday morning. It's going to be at Travis Park, and that's a change from previous years when it used to start at Milam Park. The procession is going to lead to Main Plaza, and that's where the reenactment of the crucifixion will take place in front of San Fernando Cathedral. The San Antonio Passion Play dates back to 1983. Back then, the wooden cross carried by the actor weighed 150 pounds. Now, a 50-pound cross will be carried by the actor portraying Jesus. KSAT's going to be live streaming Friday's Passion Play. So if you can't make it downtown, you can watch it on our air, on our website on Friday. 
You can see the full schedule of events as well for the Passion Play and Good Friday on KSAT.com. So we are almost halfway through Holy Week leading up to Easter Sunday. And this year, the Archdiocese of San Antonio will celebrate 150 years. It's a long time. And so uh, we're really excited. And this is bringing a new life to all of us and to the whole church. All the priests of the Archdiocese got together yesterday at the Holy Spirit Church on Blanco Road to celebrate the establishment of the Archdiocese in August of 1874. The priests also renewed their promises during a special mass last night. This is just one of many events planned for this year to celebrate 150 years. Taking a look outside with live cam, uh, you can see it's a, bit, a little murky downtown, but it looks like it's clearing all the way around the city. Yeah, it's trying to. We're trying to get some of these clouds out of here with some sun this afternoon, although that may lead to a few more showers and storms popping up. It's been a little damp and cool so far this morning. The aquifer down half a foot to 640.3 and your pollen count. Oak actually dropped a little bit, if you can believe that, 1,860, but we noticed grass showing up for the first time this season and a host of other allergens there in the count. When does the rain end? What does Easter weekend look like? And when is our next shot at some showers and storms? We'll take a look, coming up. You know, the last three or four questions, I've been stumped. I wish they'd just give me an easy one. Okay, essay live. Mm -hmm. All right. Where are you, Fiona? Mike? There he is. Going. Okay, well, of course, Easter's this weekend. Uh -huh. So we want to know, Easter baskets should always contain what? what? Oh. Or what should always be in your Easter basket? It's an basket? easy one, David. Candy. Well, yeah, what kind of candy? Get specific. Oh. Ooh, specific. I just, I, whatever. Whatever you want to throw in there, I'll eat it. I'm not I, picking I on the candy. I just made one up for my son, uh -huh. and it's got a big, it's got to have a big chocolate rabbit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Okay. Jelly beans, some of those, some of those whoppers, and then you can throw. Like no, that. no, we don't need peeps. You don't like peeps? And a chocolate. No, no. <laughs> no, man, I'm happy. Did you uh, see what she just said, buddies. David? Huh? You like peeps? He's, he, I don't care for people. She just said, we great minds think alike, because yeah. you can't pick one thing in there, just no. like me, I can't pick one thing. So Because it, you need a but plethora. But if you had one, oh, no. here it we go. would be the chocolate rabbit, Showing right? Showing off the big words. Right. So. And a stuffed anyway. animal. Hey, and just a little tease, we are going to show you how to make this and uh, nice. not break the bank on this beautiful mm -hmm. Easter basket. What's in there, Mike? What's in it? And you'll have to find out. No. So he doesn't yeah. know. I he don't. Didn't he doesn't know. Whatever it is. <laughs> he doesn't know. But it is beautiful. Looking now. Yes. <laughs> so scan that QR code yeah. and let us know. Fill in that blank. You can't see a chocolate bunny in there if there's one in there? Uh -huh. I don't see a chocolate bunny in there, no. Oh. Okay. I could have already fail. eaten it, too. Uh -oh. My book. Ooh. Man. That's a good looking Easter basket, though. You know what else is in my son's Easter basket? What is that? Because he's, you know. A young adult, uh -huh. a gift card. Mm. Ooh, nice. That's kind of a new thing. Or is it really? With money. Gotta, is it a gift card little. to a certain place or just a general gift card to it's anywhere you want to go? It's a general gift card in an egg. In an egg. Nice. I like that. Yeah, how about wow. you, Justin? You've got little ones. Do you put like quarters and stuff in Easter eggs and scatter them all over the yard? Yeah, I was about to say, if we were playing a game of family feud here, you guys would not have got the number one answer. The number one answer is Easter eggs. Right, right. Uh, <laughs> David with, with candy <laughs> ding, just ding, right ding. off the top. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, yeah, you, you know, you can put a little money in there. Uh, that's always fun. You hide the Easter eggs. And well, Easter yeah, you don't want to put yeah. chocolate in there and then it bakes in the sun. Yes, through well, that's May. True too. All right, you can put all the candy in an Easter egg. <laughs> there you go. Uh, it is going to be plenty warm for Easter. We know that so far. Nice. Not, not this morning, though. It has been chilly and it's been somewhat damp. Take a look at this time lapse. So you can see the clouds rolling through, and then we got the rain showers right there, right about 9 o'clock or so. Showers started passing through. And uh, you can see some rain on the camera. And then just recently, we're looking at mostly cloudy skies. Uh, here's a look at the radar. Most of the significant rain has passed, and even then it was, it was fairly light, didn't add up to a whole lot. But we still have a few sprinkles that are showing up on radar, especially across western parts of Bear County. So we're not completely done with the rain. It's just anything we have left here is going to be pretty light. We've also got a clearing line that's trying to work down into the city with some sun shining in places like Bandera out towards Lakey. And the forecast shows that this will continue to push east with that clearing line coming through San Antonio. Now, as we said earlier, 
what will happen then once we get a little instability this afternoon. We could see some pop up isolated thunderstorms show up. This is around five o'clock and it shows that uh, activity and then that would last through about 8 p.m. before we lose the daytime heating and most of this would go away. So we are going to keep rain chances in this afternoon. It's just that it will be hit or miss type stuff. So our forecast looks like this. Uh, we'll bring down rain chances briefly and then bring them back up a little bit to 20% this afternoon. 70 at 3 o'clock, 72 at 4 p.m. That's uh, that's our high. If we get there, that's going to be incumbent on the clouds moving out, but I think that they will. 65 at 8 p.m. when we take the rain chances away. Then as we get into tonight, you start to see those temperatures dropping. And by the way, we'll be back in the 40s, I think, or at least close to 50 tomorrow morning again. So it'll be jacket weather for one more morning and then things warm up from there. Outside right now, the sun's trying to shine through. We've got 56 at the airport. Places like Kerrville where there is some sun, look at that number, 65. It's not every day that Kerrville is 9 degrees warmer than San Antonio, but that's where we are right now. 54 New Braunfels, 55 in Seguin and Bernie. And again, the reason why Kerrville is so much warmer is because the sun is out. Uh, we've still got clouds over San Antonio and Hondo. And then as I said off the top of the show too, we're going to be watching these clouds here and then these as well. These are the kind of clouds that will bubble up into some showers and storms. And that may happen sooner rather than later, just looking at the satellite picture. 67 in New Valley, it's 70 in Del Rio, where it's been sunny for a while now. 60 in Honda, but still some 50s here over San Antonio. Those numbers will jump up once the sun pops out. And then as I said, morning lows will start to get warmer going forward as more humidity starts to come into play. By Easter weekend, morning lows will be back in 60s, so it won't be as chilly during the morning. Tomorrow will be the last day where you might need a jacket. Uh, Futurecast, so this is a low that's bringing the rain today. It moves away, and then there's another low that slowly develops out west. It's not until Monday of next week that it moves close enough to where we can add in some rain chances, and I think that'll be late Monday into early Tuesday. We could see a few thunderstorms, so that'll be our next rain chance. Here it is in the seven-day forecast. 79 tomorrow, mostly sunny. 80 on Good Friday. 82 Saturday, 83 Sunday. Mostly cloudy for Easter Sunday, but not bad. And then we add in some rain chances, 30% on Monday. Guys. Great weather for Easter egg hunts. Yep. Thank you. A UTSA looking to a seasoned veteran to lead the way on defense this coming year. And if you want to know how the NFL will handle kickoffs this season, just think back to the old XFL. Nice first season winding down once again tonight. They're getting ready to host the, well, not host, go on the road to the Utah Jazz. The question is, is Will Victor Wimbanyama play in this? Remember, he sat out last game, got that sore ankle. So we'll see if he even made a road trip even there or if he's going to wait and play when they come back home after they go to Utah tonight. Tip off of that one is at 8 o'clock. Hey, UTSA Roadrunners in week three of spring football drills at the race practice facility. And one guy to watch this season is fifth year senior Donnie Taylor. Last season, he had 46 tackles. Two sacks. The former star player out of Shiner High School is a guy Coach Trailer can really trust this season. You know, when he came out of Shiner, he was uh, uh, just kind of a knucklehead, to be honest with you, and he'd made the turn, and now he's a single-digit guy. And now he's a guy, like, I lean on him to lead. He knows what I want, and I know he can give it to me. Every day we just getting better. It's just stacking days, uh, correcting the stuff that I messed up on the day before. I mean, it's, it's, you're never going to have a perfect day, but you can always strive to be perfect. A lot of us coming out of high school are knuckleheads. Donya is a younger brother of former UTSA player Adrian Taylor. So good luck to him. The NFL owners approved a new kickoff, which would be similar to the format that originated in the XFL. It's all kind of wacky when you look at it, but it kind of makes sense. During the 2024 NFL season, kickers will continue to kick from the 35, but the other 10 players on the kickoff team will line up at the receiving team's 40-yard line. At least nine members of the return team will line up in the what's called the setup zone. That's between the 35 and 30 yard lines. Up to two returners can line up in the landing zone between the goal line and the 20 yard line. No one other than the kicker and returners can move until the ball hits the ground or hits a player inside that landing zone. The NFL wants to make kickoffs exciting again, but with player safety in mind, Dallas Cowboys special teams coordinator John Vassell likes it biggest benefit we're going to get from this because this isn't just NFL this is hopefully going for a long time is the college potentially of adopting it high school adopting it flag football adopting it like Riz said I think that would probably make us the most proud of seeing this go to the other parts of football where today I feel like we made football better 
and I feel like we've made football safer, and that's going to trickle down to a whole bunch of other levels. Yeah, last year got kind of old because the kickers always kick it out of the end zone, or the yeah. guys make a fair yeah. catch. You never see a kickoff return. That used to be a, be a, that a was great exciting. part of the game. Yeah. yeah. So maybe this will be safer and a lot more exciting. There were some really good ones by LSU last year. Do you remember that? I, I'm trying to think. FDA <laughs> approving a new drug that may help stop and even reverse a rare fatal condition that doctors call a ticking time bomb. We have details on that in the next half hour. Paying with a credit card could soon get cheaper thanks to an historic new agreement on so-called swipe fees. A look at the $30 billion deal that could affect the way you pay at stores. Search and rescue efforts have turned into a recovery today for the six construction workers who went missing when the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsed. I'm Christiane Cordero in Baltimore with the latest in the investigation coming up. The controversial SB4 law remains blocked today after a federal appeals court decision to let legal challenges play themselves out first. The court considering whether the law violates the U.S. Constitution. It allows local and state law enforcement to arrest, detain, and even deport people they believe entered the U.S. illegally. Governor Greg Abbott signed the bill into law in December. Just last week, the Supreme Court cleared the way for the law to take effect. But hours later, the appeals court panel blocked enforcement of it. It's all part of the ongoing battle between Texas and the Biden administration over border policy and the flow of migrants into the U.S. The next court decision on this law is April 3rd, when appellate judges determine whether this injunction will be upheld again. Take you back to the Baltimore Harbor. Once again, this is exactly the moment that that ship hit the bridge and that bridge just collapsed into that harbor. And this noon, we're learning police had just 90 seconds before that happened to stop traffic. And now investigators in Baltimore are trying to figure out what went wrong aboard that massive container ship that crashed into the Francis Ski Scott Bridge. ABC's Christiane Cordero explains search crews are also back in the harbor as their efforts enter a new phase. Today, a search for survivors becomes a search for closure. Early this morning, Coast Guard officials announced their operation to find six missing construction workers will now focus on finding their bodies, believed to have fallen into the water during the collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Today, Maryland's governor told ABC News people. he spoke with their families. These were sons and fathers, and they were brothers. The men were from Central America, according to Guatemala's foreign ministry. They worked for Bronner Builders and were on the Key Bridge overnight Tuesday, fixing potholes. This tragic event was completely unforeseen and was not something that we ever could imagine would happen. Our company is in mourning over the loss of these fine people. Meantime, the NTSB continues to investigate what caused the power outage on the cargo ship Dolly, which took out steering on the ship seconds before it hit the bridge. Video shows the massive cargo ship's lights shutting off twice before it hits a support column, collapsing the entire span. It is difficult to overstate uh, the level of physical force that hit this bridge all at once. During its last inspection in May 2023, NTSB Chairwoman Jennifer Hammondy says the bridge received a satisfactory rating. We are looking at uh, the structure today. We will be boarding the vessel at some point today uh, to begin to look at uh, the devastation. Local, state, and federal leaders now have to adjust for the collapse's ripple effect. Baltimore has the busiest port in the U.S. for auto imports, according to the Maryland Port Administration. Authorities are calling the quick work of the dispatchers and the officers heroic. Right when they got that mayday call, they were able to stop traffic from continuing onto this bridge and, in the governor's words, undoubtedly saved numerous lives. Christiane Cordero, ABC News, Baltimore. Looking outside with live cam, we're waiting for the sun to come out, and indeed it is. There's just a few droplets left on the lens there on uh, Live cam. A little damp for the first half of today. Kept things cool. We didn't get a lot of rain at the airport, so it didn't add up to a whole lot, but not a bad start, right? We can always use a little bit of rain. Let's go back to the radar, and I'll show you that the rain is starting to move out. We've still got a few light returns right over San Antonio, so there still could be a few more sprinkles before it's all said and done. Uh, but the bulk of the moderate to more steady rain has moved away uh, with just a couple of light showers tracking through northwest San Antonio and along 410 at this hour. And a few more. Back to the south and west along I-35, uh, those will eventually work their way through 
and then we'll get to clear out for a little bit uh, with some uh, uh, partly cloudy to mostly sunny skies. I want to show you some of the trans guide shots. Looks like roads are already starting to dry up. That happened pretty quickly. There were a lot of wet roads just a few hours ago, but uh, now with the sun trying to pop out, looks like everything's evaporating and the roads uh, perhaps aren't as slick as they once were. Our forecast today, 3 o'clock, 20% chance of rain, 70. Went ahead and bumped us up just based on the last few model runs here to 30% chance of a shower storm this afternoon. 72 at 4 o'clock, 72 at 5 p.m. That'll be our high. Again, with the sun popping out a little bit later today. And then any pop-up showers and storms that we see go away pretty quickly after sunset. And we'll see the uh, temperatures drop down into the 50s and eventually 40s. So another chilly morning on your Thursday, guys. Thank you, Justin. The California courtroom showdown may be over before it even starts for Hunter Biden. Today, the president's son trying to get all or some of the nine tax fraud charges against him dismissed. Prosecutors say he failed to file his taxes on time, missed deadlines to pay his IRS debts, and engaged in a criminal tax evasion scheme over several years. Biden's lawyers argue prosecutors caved to the outside pressure of Republicans to target Biden because of his father. Biden pleading not guilty to the tax fraud charges. Separately, Biden is facing charges in Delaware in connection with three alleged gun crimes, which he also denies. The Federal Trade Commission is now taking a closer look at TikTok. CNN reporting that the agency is launching a probe into the social media platform. It's for an alleged violation of the children's online privacy protection rule. Officials are also investigating a potential violation of the FTC Act, which prohibits deceptive acts that affect commerce. This comes as there's a growing congressional push to possibly book TikTok from the boot TikTok. Boot TikTok from the U.S. TikTok previously said it denies allegations that the platform is a national security threat to U.S. citizens. Visa and MasterCard lowering their fees that the companies charge stores every time you swipe your card. This comes after the credit card companies reached a deal with retailers. It's one of the largest antitrust settlements in U.S. history at $30 billion. Here's how it could affect you. Most of the time, those swipe fees are passed on to us. But with this latest settlement, the savings retailers will see will likely get passed down to us. They should make it easier to pay with a credit card because what they will do now is not probably not charge a, a surcharge on top of the, the, the price, but give discounts for those uh, issuers and banks and networks that give them a better deal. The U.S. District Court for the Eastern District of New York still has to approve this settlement. The White House has released a plan to increase the supply of affordable housing. It comes at a time when housing prices are high and continuing to go up. CNN's Jen Sullivan takes a look at the president's proposal and whether it will help in the current housing market. Housing prices continue to rise. The National Association of Realtors released their February numbers last week, which showed median home sale prices are at $384,500. That's 5.7% higher than this time last year. It's the eighth month in a row prices have gone up, and the price hikes are in all four regions of the U.S. It's something President Joe Biden wants to change. Too many people, the dream of having a good home, it still feels out of reach. I get it. Experts say prices will likely remain high for now. I don't think there will be any meaningful decline in home prices in many parts of the country. It's not just high sticker prices making homes expensive. A 30-year fixed mortgage rate as of last Thursday was about 6.87%, according to Freddie Mac. There's also a high demand right now and low inventory, which drives up prices further. To help with those costs, Biden wants to give Americans an annual tax credit of $400 a month for the next two years to go toward their mortgage. He also wants to encourage more building so buyers and renters have more options. But some experts say the cost of land to build is still high. It's not that the house is not affordable, it's that the land has very volatile uh, economic uh, cycle. For Consumer Watch, I'm Jen Sullivan. The Food and Drug Administration approving a drug that may help stop or even reverse pulmonary arterial hypertension, or PAH. It's diagnosed in less than 1,000 Americans every year. 
but the condition causes blood vessels to thicken, making the heart have to work harder to get blood to the lungs. Without treatment, people with PAH usually only live two to three years after the diagnosis. But this new medication called Soda Tercep offers new hope. The drug helps people uh, keep their blood vessels from thickening and it improves blood flow. Easter is the third most popular occasion for Americans to buy chocolate, chocolate. But the sweet treat could leave a bitter taste behind because the prices are climbing. Why? It could be pricier to fill up your Easter basket this year. Remember we were talking about those chocolate Easter bunnies? Oops. Your Easter celebrations could be more expensive this year. One reason, chocolate prices are hitting a new high. There's a number of things that have led to these very high prices. Uh, chief among them is a rather large drop year on year in cocoa production in West Africa, which is by far the largest producer globally. Yeah, but it's not just cocoa prices. Sugar up more than 12% from last year. For budget-conscious shoppers, this year Hershey is offering additional sizes of some treats. Another way to save, don't buy your candy too early because stores drop prices on Easter-specific treats closer to Easter. For example, Amazon Fresh started slashing prices yesterday with some products selling for as much as 75% off. Meantime, Dollar Tree raising the maximum price on store items from $5 to $7. The company CEO says the price increase was due to a wealthier customer base. It says that the store's fastest growing demographic is people who earn at least $125,000 a year. Three years ago, the company raised the base price of items to $1.25. This past June, it set a new cap of $5. Dollar Tree reported a net loss of more than $1.7 billion back in February. So, as a result, it announced plans to close nearly 1,000 stores. David Sears is in the house. That means the Mega Millions jackpot has been won by somebody else. <laughs> it's back down to $20 million after a winning ticket was sold in New Jersey. According to the lottery, one ticket got an estimated uh, one ticket uh, one somebody 1.13 billion dollars that's the fifth largest mm. grand prize in the game's history it is the first mega rather the first billion dollar prize in the prize's history um, the last big winner was December 8th when the prize was $394 million and it was snagged by two players in California. For those of us who did not win, and that's most of us, right? Pretty much all of us except okay, one. Okay, everybody one in this room. Tonight's Powerball drawing offers an estimated $865 million jackpot, which would be the fifth largest in that game's history. And I was going to take you and Justin to a really nice lunch. You were going to give us lunch? Mm. A, a really nice lunch, but, you know. In Paris? You would have been gone. <laughs> you wouldn't even have been here. Hey, listen, you don't need to play the lottery. Just go outside on April 8th and look up at the eclipse. It's like winning the lottery. <laughs> we're very lucky to have this smooth. The odds wow. of it happening over here in San Antonio are, are uh, pretty low, so this is pretty awesome. 57 so far today. 47 was low this morning. The record is 31 so we still have gotten below freezing before on this date that was back in 1913 no freezing temperatures in fact it warms up uh, we're going to take a look at that forecast for you coming up we're getting all the rain out of the way in advance of the eclipse we do not want weather like this and just to move your head just a little bit because it's 12 days i'm just i'm just yeah, I'm wrong way there you go well, that's one of the problems being that tall. If I was standing there, you could still see the 12 <laughs> days left. How's that? The there you go. Uh, yes, 12 days. Uh, 12 <laughs> days away. We are excited. Uh, and uh, this is one fact uh, I think is good to know because let's say you're a teacher at a school and you want to know when the kids need to put their glasses on or when they can take them off. So you can only have your glasses off during totality. And that's only going to last anywhere from a few seconds to couple minutes here in San Antonio depending on where you are but just before totality happens you're gonna see a diamond ring this is you can see why it's called a diamond ring right 
It looks nice. like one. So this will be moments before totality, and this will kind of be your signal that, hey, in a few minutes or a few seconds, really, uh, you can start to take your glasses off. So that'll be your cue. And then you want to make sure before that sun starts to reemerge, glasses are back on for all the kiddos. But we are 12 days away. 12 days away. Can't believe it. All right, take a look at this picture on our KSAT Connect. This is from Mission Del Lago. It's a fun golf course if you've ever been down there. Uh, but uh, you can see some of the showers coming down and uh, the clouds around. And uh, we've had some showers here and there passing through. Right now, the rain has kind of come to an end, although the airport's still reporting a few sprinkles. 59, two pointers at 52. Uh, south southwesterly winds at about nine miles per hour and as you look at the authority radar you can see a lot of the, the bulk of the action is pushed off to our east now so places like gonzalez and cuero seeing a little bit of light rain none of this has been very heavy we didn't get any lightning or thunder or anything like that uh, we've still got a few sprinkles left off to the west once those push through though uh, we will start to see some clearing now one thing i will point out uh, you might see here at the top of your screen look at uh, this little pop-up here on fredericksburg so this is back where we're seeing sun and some of that instability that I mentioned. And now we are starting to get these little cells popping up. So this will be kind of the next round that we'll be watching. We're not looking for severe weather with this, but these will probably be a bit more robust in the sense that we could see some lightning and thunder with these pop-up showers and storms. And the computer models show some of that occurring there in the hill country and maybe as far south as San Antonio through dinner time. And then you'll see these uh, last seven o'clock eight o'clock and then they'll start to go away with the loss of daytime heating uh, i did up the rain chances to 30 percent this afternoon so keep the umbrella with you. you had it this morning just go ahead and keep it with you this afternoon too 70 at three o'clock 30 percent chance four and five o'clock yes we will see some sun as well 72 the forecast high and then rain chances go away tonight and it gets chilly again we'll see temperatures in the 40s by tomorrow morning we'll drop into the 50s by midnight and as we look at the dew point trend over the next several days, uh, more humidity starts pouring in here. So uh, it's fairly dry, at least at the surface today. I know it's raining, but uh, it's fairly dry at the surface. And then you'll see these dew points really start to climb. And so by the weekend, it gets almost downright humid. And that will lead to another chance of rain down the line. Our first chance with the low today pushes east. So we get into more of a quiet pattern. It's more of kind of a a ridge right or more kind of flat and that typically means quiet weather but we got a trough developing out west this big dip in the jet stream here and then that starts to push towards texas and by the time we get into monday we get more of a southwesterly flow right over texas and that sometimes can get us some showers and storms we'll have a, a frontal boundary too so those two things combined will give us our next chance of rain monday night into tuesday morning here's how it plays out in the seven day forecast 79 tomorrow 80 on Friday, the weekend for Easter weekend. Expect partly cloudy skies Saturday, 82, and then Easter Sunday, 83, and mostly cloudy. Our next chance of rain, as I said, Monday, 85, 30% chance, and then we cool down a little bit and dry out as we head into Tuesday of next week. We'll be right back. We're getting some serious education on this eclipse coming up on the 8th. It's, it's, gonna be it's, fun. it's fun to listen it's to fun. all the weather people talk about it. It's fun to watch SA Live and what, I don't know. Yeah, y'all got there, something special. Y'all are going to be live too. Yeah, y'all going to be yep. live too, right? Yeah, we're going to be yeah, out there are. at the at the Rock. The Rock at La yeah. Pantera. Yes, mm -hmm. indeed. And with some of the folks from UTSA, because they got a whole big deal educating kids all about this yeah. and all about space and everything. More on talking that, about it. More on that coming up. <laughs> all right, first of all, Easter, of course, is coming up Sunday, and Easter Basket. What's East Basket has to have what? She always be in your Easter Basket. So scan that QR code and let us know. And if you've got a picture already, we'd love to see that. Yes, indeed. Maybe the Easter Bunny came a little bit early. All right. Are you looking for a really nice Easter Basket? Look at this one. Libby Castillo from Goodwill brought this. And these are all made up there, right? They sure are. We had 900 of these baskets made by our team members, but you can also find some really great finds at Goodwill to make an Easter basket yourself. And if you want to buy one of those mm -hmm. things, you're not going to believe the price over there at Goodwill. All right, looking for a great spot for Easter brunch. How about Corinne over there at Plaza San Antonio? And Joseph Krause, executive chef, is here. What's on the menu? Uh, we've got some really great traditional brunch dishes with some non-traditional twists on them. 
Um, and then we've also got some great dinner features like a 46 hour braised short rib that we'll be featuring here in just a little bit. If you could just mm -hmm. smell that, the aroma is fantastic. All right, and of course, how about some beautiful Easter eggs for your Easter egg hunt? Yes, you Megan Sevilla from Bloom and Stem is here. So we're decorating with flowers. Yeah, if you're pressed for time, we have an excellent <laughs> idea for you guys. <laughs> and she's gonna have more puns and everything coming up here in just a minute. That and more on SA Live. Stick around.